What's up guys, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're talking about roll forming in extreme temperatures, some best practices to make sure your panels come out perfectly. And today I've got Brian Yancey who has worked on more roll forming machines than I can possibly count. Thanks for being here, Brian. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. Absolutely, so let's start with you know, we're talking hot and cold, extreme temperatures, how to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Uh, tell me a little bit, let's start, you know, with the cold temperatures. All right, let's start there. Before we start with cold temperatures though, cold or hot, we really wanna make sure you do first is, is maintain your machine before you get to that point. Uh, if you're not keeping covers on the machines, if you're not keeping it covered or indoors, or you know if it's if it hasn't been serviced in a normal operating condition, you might get away with that. But if you take that unmaintained machine, uncovered machine, and then you put it into a cold situation, or if you put it into a hot situation, you're going to go from yeah, it worked to I got problems all day. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Starting with cold temperatures, you know you got to make the assumption that there's no snow buildup on the machine, and there's no ice or water buildup on the machine, um, or in the machine. Uh, to, to help with that, again, if it's at the shop, you want it indoors or covered with a, a canvas cover. Mm -hmm. um, as you're traveling with the machine on the road, definitely it needs to be covered or within an enclosed trailer. And then that way, when you get on site, you don't have ice buildup or water or snow built up inside the machine. Once you get on site, we're taking that canvas cover off. We gotta make sure all of our metal covers are in place. You know, not only for safety, but also you don't want ice, snow, water getting inside the machine when you're running. Once you get that water in there, uh, you're gonna have issues with your drive roller slipping, gonna have issues with your encoder slipping, gonna have issues with, you know, build up on your forming rollers, and you're gonna get drag lines and, you know, roller marks and stuff like that yep. as well. So we've got the machine, we're on site, we've got the canvas cover off, we've got our machine covers on. We want to make sure that this machine is nice and warmed up, both the engine, the gas engine, and the hydraulic system before we go to use it, all right? Don't get on site slam that material in there and hit go. Your drive gears, your drive chains, your hydraulic fluid, it's all needing to be at operating temperature before you go to roll panels. We're gonna turn the machine on. We're gonna let that engine idle 10, 15 minutes. Let that hydraulic fluid kind of get up and get to a working temperature. That hydraulic fluid's really heavy at that point. It's cold, it's moving like syrup, and your shear's gonna move slow your drive system's gonna move slow and you don't want to put that extra use and wear on your machine. Totally, yeah. I mean, everything's moving slow. The installer's gonna be moving slow. You're gonna be moving slow. <laughs> yeah, every, so. everybody on site's right. gonna be moving slow. All right, let's, let's get some heat. Let's get some warmth out there. All right, so uh, drive rollers. Before we put the material th through the machine, we've got polyurethane drive rollers and in cold weather, they're, you know, they're kind of, they're going to have a, a little bit of a flat spot, okay? okay? Making the assumption you're not traveling with material in the machine, as you shouldn't be, for anyone wondering. You're going to get there, machine's warming up, jog those drive rollers for a few minutes. Empty machine, just jog, okay? Just let them roll, and then they, those flat spots will work themselves out. Once you're warmed up, once the machine's warmed up, once those drive rollers are kind of, you know, warmed up, feed material through the machine, make sure that material's staying dry as it's going into the machine. And, you know, for the most part, that's that's pretty much it in the cold weather. Okay, yeah, I mean, if, if you got snow blowing around and stuff like that, you might not want to be out there anyways, so. Yeah, we've got, we've got dedicated customers. That's very true. We so. have very dedicated customers. <laughs> when it comes to, you know, that cold weather, we talk a lot about expansion and contraction when we do installation and stuff. Is there any issues with metal contracting when it's cold out or anything that you should worry about in that instance? If you're doing normal service maintenance and upkeep on your equipment and you're to factory specs, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't okay. be concerned. I mean, we talk about new tech roll forming machines. I mean, they have roll forming machines even in Antarctica. So they got to work in those kind of environments. Absolutely, yes, sir. So let's transition over to extreme heat. You know, it's a super hot day, very sunny. What are we looking like here? You've got to make the assumption that your machine is, is well-maintained and up to the task before you get on site. Uh, probably should have talked about this, you know, in the cold weather as well, but the last thing you want is your operator in the cold or, or somewhere in the heat yep. 
trying to figure out why the machine's not running correctly. Do it at the shop before you get on site. So going to heat, again, uh, you're traveling with the cover on the machine, not just the metal covers, but a canvas cover as well, keeping the dust, debris. If it's in a hot environment, say Florida, it's raining, uh, you know, on the way to the site anyways, we wanna keep that out of the machine the best we can. Yep. Get on site, we're taking that canvas cover off. Again, making sure that our metal covers are on. One, for safety. Two, we don't want dust, debris, heat. You know, we don't want additional stuff falling into our machine sure. as we're trying to run it. You know, your drive rollers in the heat, they're not gonna be as susceptible to the flat spots as you would in the cold. But inversely, we don't wanna run our machine and, and overheat it if we don't need to in the heat. Uh, hydraulic fluid does have a tendency to heat up in the heat uh, faster or stay hotter. Just uh, make sure we're, if we're not using the machine, we're keeping it off. Keep the hydraulic fluid uh, temperature down when we can and uh, run it as normal. Let's say you run into an issue, hot or cold, before you spend two or three hours out there beating on the machine or yourself or, you know, you know, in the extreme cold or in the extreme heat, both of which you don't need to be out in anyways, call New Tech or your uh, distributor where you got the machine from and uh, first run through the issues you're having. Okay. Again, I'm making the assumption your machine is properly and well maintained from a New Tech service technician or a distributor's technician. If, if it runs, if your machine runs well in a, a average climate, it should run the same in an extreme climate. Uh, given, you know, you're not letting it get rained on or snowed on or build up. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's, it's super important before you get to the job site, really anytime you own a piece of equipment like this, to make sure you have a plan if things do go wrong. So you're not on the job site panicking, you know who to call, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. you understand how things work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the name's all over the machine. You Google it, call us directly. We're happy to help you before you get get too far into a, a, a situation with your equipment. Any of the controllers, uh, from the earliest AMS controllers to our most recent uh, unique controller, electronics in any condition, cold to hot, can also have issues. In the cold, they can be slow just like everything else. So if you have a controller that predates the unique controller, take it off the machine, keep it in the cab of the truck or, you know, in the in the plant of the office. When you're ready to go, take it out, connect it so that it doesn't have that, you know, that slow to function. Uh, in the heat or the rain, again, you don't want that out there also. Uh, so keep it in the truck or the office. The unique controller, given that it's mounted directly to the machine, it is designed to function in more extreme temperatures than we historically have had equipment Designed yep. for, uh, but also you know if you get down to negative 10, 15, 20 degrees, you know it doesn't want to work just like you don't want to work in that temperature. And so you got to give it a second to warm up. It will, if it's really windy, you know try to keep some wind off of it. You know I've 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 got customers that put a little box around it, keep the wind off of it. You know it's as crazy as that sounds. It's with the heat as well. You know if you're out there in the sun beating down on you. Um, you know, the unique controller does have doors to kind of keep the uh, the sun off the screen, but you don't you don't want the sun beating dire down directly into that screen. Try to keep the sun off that, maybe an umbrella. So what should you not do in these situations to try to solve an issue or, or to, you know, assumptions that you can make in the extreme heat or cold? Y you shouldn't need anything external uh, to make your machine run better in these extreme conditions. And I'm talking, you don't need to lube it more. Uh, you don't need to lube it less. Once the machine warms up, if you're spraying stuff on there, water, WD-40, you know, engine oil, once the machine warms up, all those parts that you're lubing are, you know, they're gonna warm up and anything you put on it, it's gonna start cooking off and it's gonna start falling on your pan. And anything you don't want, you know, cosmetic, you know, in that pan going on the roof, well, that's what you are doing. Yeah. Uh, again, if your machine was running normal and you're properly maintained in a, in a normal operating conditions, it should function the same. You don't want to make adjustments. Oh, I need more pressure. No, you don't. 
okay? Oh, I need it to be faster. No, you don't. Any external influences that you put on this machine in these extreme temperatures are only going to have adverse effects on how the machine runs. You know, the new tech machine as designed, both panel and gutter machine, you know, the, the, the core concepts of, of how that machine was designed 30 years ago um, were to be over-engineered and rugged enough that it can operate in any condition as it was. Yeah. Anything the customer is doing in addition to that usually is, is going to have a negative or adverse effect to, to the equipment, the panel or you know, safety or, or the running, how the, the basic components go together. And we don't recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, thanks so much, Brian. I yeah, really appreciate thanks. the info. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate you having me. If you have any questions, comment down below. We'd love to answer them. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.